Uh, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the president and CEO of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. Mahalo for joining us here on the Think Tech platform and Restaurants of Hawaii show. Today is a very special day. We just had our 16th annual Hawaii Restaurant Association Hall of Fame. And it's the highlight of the year for the food service industry in Hawaii, where we recognize all of the people that have done decades of support and um, gosh, impact to our culinary industry here in Hawaii. As we reflect back to that evening, I have two guests here and I would like to have them introduce themselves to share a little bit about them. And um, we're gonna be discussing a little bit about the event throughout this podcast. So first, may I please start with Tambra, ladies first. Tambra, please introduce yourself, the name of the organization you're with, and a little bit about your background. Aloha, everyone, and thank you, Cheryl, for having me here today. Um, my name is Tambra Garrick. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for a company called Hawaii Farm Project, and um, one of our brands is Maui Gold Pineapple. I um, serve on the Hawaii Restaurant Association Board of Directors, I'm currently on the executive board as treasurer, um, and I live on the island of Maui. Yes, yes. And, you know, Tambra has been my lifeline to Maui, especially Tambra with everything that happened with the Lahaina wildfire. It was Tambra who constantly kept us updated. So thank you, Tambra, for all that you do for the industry. And for my Peter, Peter, please introduce yourself. Share with us the organization that you're with and a little bit about your background. Thanks, Sean. Again, like Tambra, I'd like to thank uh, the opportunity for to be here in this uh, podcast, in this video. Um, Peter Abacar, Jr., I'm the executive chef of the Monica Beach Hotel. I also sh I share a board seat as well in the Hawaii Russian Association. I am part of the Farmers United on the Big Island. I am part of the Honoka High School Career uh, academies, culinary director, culinary advisor. I'm also on the Kohala High School culinary advisor for their career pathways, as well as the Pro Start program there. Um, also part of the uh, the uh, Restaurant Association on the Big Island, and also the Chefs Association. Um, yeah, I'm a Big Island boy, born and raised on the Big Island. Um, you know, for me, what we did for to help Maui as well as pandemic the pandemic providing food for our team members and the farmers who actually had crops in the ground that we actually uh, had them grow for us or sell to us who we give to our team members was one of uh, one of my uh, great uh, pleasures of being part of this organization and this uh, this island community and i'm just sorry that we couldn't have the other three um inductees also on this call first let's talk about what it felt like to be inducted into the Hawaii Restaurant Association Hall of Fame. And what does this recognition mean to you? May I please start off with Peter? I've heard about the, the award and I did more research after I was given the award. And it was so humbling to, to be part of the list. I mean, even that night looking at the program and the past winners it was amazing to now be part of this, you know, amazing list of, of human beings that are part of our industry. And, you know, uh, it was just quite an honor. Quite an honor. And Peter, you have to know years from now when we have a Hall of Fame and it's in the future and they look at the list and they see your name on it, especially to those students, because I know what you're doing, especially with the Kohala, because I'm closest to, to teacher Tracy and yes. supporting those students who are our future culinary superstars, you know, Absolutely. these students yeah. touching and impacting, which is why. Peter, one of the main reasons why, after reading your whole bio, that the selection committee selected you to be inducted this year. So, Ms. Tamra. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, Peter, for all that you do. So, Ms. Tamra, what did it feel like to be inducted and what does this recognition mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it was an amazing night. Um, you know, the Hawaii Restaurant Association definitely knows how to throw a party. And so it was just a very fun vibe. Of course, there was excellent food and drinks. And so it just was a really fun energy um, in in the ballroom there at the Sheraton Waikiki. And I think, you know, for me, and I mentioned this in the, in the video that was played at the event, it's not really about me um, 
you know, it's not even really about um, our team, you know, Maui Gold. It's it's about everyone that came together. And I think I had mentioned, you know, our industry, the restaurant industry, the agriculture industry came together so quickly to make sure that people had nutritious, warm food after the fire. Um, you know, and, P and Peter also mentioned, you know, the, the pandemic. A lot of my work during the pandemic was with the Hawaii Restaurant Association, um, working so hard on the restaurant reopening guidelines that were later adopted by the Department of Health, supporting restaurateurs and all small businesses and farms on how to navigate um, that time period was really challenging. And then, you know, to start to reopen and, and then have this fire on Maui, I was just so thankful to have those connections that we, you know, built during the pandemic, because those were the people that we were able to reach out to and lean on the Restaurant Association to get support for the restaurants on Maui, we lost so many restaurants and so many people lost not only their job, but also their home or a family member. Uh, it was a terrible time, but to know that we had the support of this entire industry across the state was just so inspiring. And so the night was wonderful, but like I said, it wasn't really about me. It was about all of us and celebrating the, the fact that we know that we are here for each other, that our industry is important and is something that um, is, not just for visitors to our islands, but it's for each other and taking care of each other. And so it was just a great honor. Wow, well, thank you, Tabra. And as you mentioned, right, you're right, through the pandemic, strengthening more relationships that really supported us through the wildfire, is it's ongoing as we're still not out of all of the, you know, just a lot of challenges right now also, not only with the employee shortage, the rising cost of everything, we're still holding together. And that's what that night was all about, Tabra. You're right. It's just, you know, 14 chefs got together to provide all of the food for the Hall of Fame. And then we had all of our beverage um, partners and sponsors and members come on in and provide all the beverages. So thank you to everyone who made Yeah, shout out to Kohola Brewery. I, they were there supporting the event and they lost their brewery in Lahaina and have been working so hard. They just reopened in, in Wailea. And I, I remember, um, you know, of, of all the choices that I could have had there, you know, beautiful cocktails and wine. When I saw their beers there, I was like, yes, I must have a Lahaina Haze. Thank you, Kohola Brewery. Uh, Mary Anderson and the team over there, just incredible, you know, story that they have. And so it was great to see them represented at the Hall of Fame event. So thanks to them. Absolutely. We always want to do that. Tamara, that's kind of my, as you know, even last year, like any type of um, baskets that I have to make. It's all Maui based. I want to be sure Maui was represented in the Hall of Fame um, beverages. So yes, that's as you rec as you recognize, that's my goal is to try to get as much support over there that we can support those businesses on that island as they need just as much. They need more support than, than anyone else. So let's look back at that night. And was there one standout moment for each of you that happened that night that will always be in your heart, Tambra. <laughs> I think I shared this with uh, Cheryl following the event. Uh, we got together at the Hawaii Tourism Conference and and um, I shared with Cheryl, I said, oh, wow, you know, it was so cool. Um, after the awards were given out, I was approached by Russell um, Hata, uh, Hawaii Hata, and I had never met him in person. Um, and he's done so much for the industry, so much for our association, um, just offers so much support um, to the community across this, to all the communities across the state. And so for him to come up to me and introduce himself to me and, and say that he enjoyed the video, I was, you know, kind of starstruck. And I just was really honored that he came up uh, to personally introduce himself to me. So, um, and, and it was, I was, excited that I could uh, tell him thank you for everything that he's done for the association and the industry. And I hope that they can open sometime on Maui and um, that, that would be great for our islands. Thank you, Tamara. You're right. You know, why Hata was the presenting sponsor for our Hall of Fame gala. And we look forward to them sponsoring next year, also being the presenting sponsor. And again, Tamara, you know, I did mention in my little clip about the million dollar endowment pledge that Russell and made to the food industry in Hawaii. And through that, we're doing additional training for our, our 
we're going to start with the kitchens, additional trainings in the kitchens, because when we did the survey, serving all the restaurateurs, what is needed right now? And they said, we really need additional training in the kitchens. As we are hiring people, we're bringing them on and not all of them are totally trained and educated, Peter, in working in a kitchen. You know, they may have some background, but not at the level where they need to be. So that's part of what the the Hata Endowment Fund is going to support. So Excellent. thank you. Thank you so much for telling me that story. As I was standing there crying, I was like, oh my God, Russell is just amazing. And so I'm going to ask the same question to Mr. Peter. Peter, was there one standout moment that night that made it so special for you? For me, it was having my my mentor, um, Mel Arellano, there with me. I mean, he's done so much for the industry. He was, you know, my first boss. He was the executive chef of the um, Personal Wine Bank Bankers Club. So he gave my first job. He was my instructor at uh, KCC, and he was teaching the dining room service class. And, you know, like myself and other um, Outer Island kids, he really took care of us. He showed me the value of showing up on time. Um, how much hard work it would take to get, you know, get ahead in the industry. Um, and just basically, and again, I think I was about to share a story about, you know, sometimes our outer, outer island kids, we couldn't have money. I didn't have money to come back home to the Big Island. I'm from the Big Island. Originally, you know, he offered his his home to us, uh, his family. Um, Thanksgiving dinners were, it was for me, one year was at his house. And just seeing him, because he actually had a kidney transplant. I haven't seen him in a, oh. quite a few years um, so having him actually not tell me that, you know, how his, the state of his health was, and I, I saw him, he actually, um, you know, he was, he was healthy, he's doing all he can, but he had lost a bit of weight. And I was kind of like, wow, he s still made it out to help celebrate with me with this great honor. And I was just so, so happy that he made it and uh, it made my night. It was amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Absolutely. As you know, Peter, when you sat at the back of that program and all the list of all the the um, different people from the food service industry that were inducted, and now your names will be added to that list of inductees into the Hall of Fame. What legacy do you two hope to leave behind for future generations um, of our culinary professionals? Tambra, you want to start off? Sure. Um, so when I was growing up, I, I grew up in rural um, Northern California, and I was really involved in 4-H and then FFA and, and you know, uh, started college uh, with a major in ag business, um, later switched to marketing. But, you know, I'm just so thankful for those experiences. And now on Maui, um, working so closely with the culinary kids and the FFA kids at the, in the ag department at Lahaina Luna High School, um, I, I think that that's my legacy to introduce them. Um, you know, kids need to know where food comes from. And I think, you know, it's so interesting when, when kids, you know, experience something through 4-H and FFA or, you know, see an animal being slaughtered and, and being a part of raising an animal or growing a garden and realizing like, okay, food isn't just wrapped in plastic at the supermarket. Um, and they, you know, the kids at Lahaina Luna, the last time I was up there, they were so excited and they were, Auntie, Auntie, do you want some lettuce? We grew all this lettuce and they they brought out these big bags of lettuce and they were so proud. Um, and you know, they're excited to learn. And I just my legacy is just supporting these programs in any way that I can because that's the next generation and and they're just so sweet. And I, I love all the students at Lahaina Luna High School. So <laughs> that is so awesome. And I think I want to just share too your legacy. Tamara is your involvement there in Maui. As you said, right, you're not originally born and raised in Maui, but it's like you are. I mean, you, you participate in the Lahaina, what is it called the Action Committee? Lahaina Town Action Committee. Yeah. Town yeah. Action Committee, the Lahaina Chamber of Commerce. It's like this girl, it's like your, your, your soul was from Maui. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. That's so sweet. That's your legacy. Okay, Peter, I'm not, I don't understand why I'm crying. So Peter, what is the- Happy tears, happy tears, all good. Let Peter, the legacy you hope to leave behind for future yeah. generations. I already know because I know what you're doing there at Kohala because I hear it from Tracy, the teacher at Kohala, but maybe you can share with the least listeners and viewers a little bit what you hope to leave behind as your legacy. Yeah, so, you know, again, back to the, 
the the past winners of the of the of the award, you know, I look at you know standing on the shoulders of some of those chefs and some of the chefs that I worked with in my life. You know, there's you know chefs that you know a couple of chefs that I worked with. You kind of looked like me from the Big Island. They kind of gave me that the courage and the inspiration and the confidence to know that you know I too can be a chef. So I like to think that my legacy is you know for local kids um, that some that may or may not think they have the means or they're they're from too small a town that they can um they know that you know I came from Honokala so they'll get too much smaller than that and you know I like to think that I would be able to inspire these kids to know that you know you know because I was a Kolohe kid too so besides being from a small town I was Kolohe and so you know the odds were kind of against me and I was getting in my own way so knowing that I came from a very small town with a very um, you know, humble background that I made it to the Hall of Fame is is what I like my legacy to be as far as the Hall of Fame is concerned. But to your point, Tamara, you too about you know the reach out programs I'm involved with, going to schools, uh, being involved with all of these events that help Big Island communities, Big Island charities. I just I just was just asked to be part of the Big Island Local Food Production Steering Committee. You know, which now the Monarchy Resort, which includes two hotels, Monarchy Beach Hotel and West Napuna, we buy the most local produce, meats, fish um, on the island. So part of this steering committee is to get our other hotels to come on board and just, you know, show them what we have done and what we can do. And if we can do it, they can as well to kind of uplift the economy with local food production, everything from milk to fish to lettuce, as you mentioned, Tamara. You know, we want to increase all of those production opportunities uh, for them strengthen the community through outreach as well as you know economically and give Hawaii visitors to Hawaii a taste of what Hawaii is. This is what we grow, this is what we do, this is how we cook because of the ingredients we have seasonally available and we cook seasonally. We try to limit our, our carbon footprint as much as we can. And a lot of chefs, you know, you know, it's fine. We we all like to work with scallops and caviar um and you know stuff from out of state. You still can, but you know, diversify what you do. And I think it's a, it's a harder job to kind of take humble ingredients grown from your area to turn into something amazing that I think, you know, there's a study done on tourism and what people are willing to pay. And a lot of people are willing to pay for locally grown things. And that's the thing too, Mike. It's hard to kind of, you know, accurately or articulate why local food is so much more expensive than domestically brought in stuff or imported stuff. But it's it's that's just how it is. But working in the hotel industry, I feel that we can actually buy the food and actually serve it to our guests. They have an amazing experience. They're willing to pay the price. At the same time, we can, you know, fulfill our responsibility to the community and to the economy by buying local. And so that's that's what I like my my legacy to be. Nice. I love that. Beautifully, yeah. said, beautifully said. So the Thank final you. question is, you know, now that you two are being honored and inducted into the Hall of Fame, what are the most important skills or qualities for aspiring legends, just like the two of you, to develop? What are some of the important skills or qualities that you would recommend for people who are watching this podcast um, to develop? You know, it's it's some things that you just have in you inherently, some things that you can learn, um, you know, you can can have a mentor to support you. But I think it's just not giving up, um, having some grit. I think, you know, whether you're a chef or you're a farmer, you're you're in this industry, it's hard work. Um, but there's so many rewards. And so I think if people, you know, have dreams of becoming an executive chef or or growing a product or or being an entrepreneur and creating value add products, like um, we have on Maui so many, many beautiful value add products. Um, and those entrepreneurs are so inspiring to me, you know, Maui chili, chili oil, high spice, hot sauce. There's all these great products that are being made on Maui from local produce. Um, so I would just say, you know, people follow your dreams um, and and work hard and and ask for help and be open and and give back to your community when you can. Because I, I think, you know, there's there's a saying that givers gain. And, and I I truly you know, believe that like the more that I give of myself, just the more uplifted I feel in my life and, and the happiness that I have. So thank you, Tamara. Excellent, excellent recommendations. Peter, any important skills or qualities that aspiring culinary legends should consider developing? Yeah. So I think Tamara hit it with the grit. I mean, you know, the the mindset to be able to put in hard work for a longer period of time for a future a future reward. You know, I think that 
a lot of times I, I see that it's not something that um, is really being taught. And to Tamara's point, it's something it's, it's, it's somehow in you already, but, you know, re reminding, you know, the, the youth of today and the future culinaries of tomorrow, that it's hard work. It's hard work what we do. So grit is important um, in terms of like really simple skills, you know, you know, learn how to cook from your, your friends, your family. And, you know, I talked to some of my, my chefs here. I have some chefs that are a little bit older than I am. I told them, you know, your legacy is going to be who you taught how to make this certain dish. Because if we, you teach someone, they'll always have that skill. And that's how you can live forever. Your, your dish will live forever. Your legacy will be um, that you taught these many people how to do this certain dish. And in terms of, you know, doing business in a way, you know, one of my mentors told me that, you know, you got to find that sweet spot in business. And I asked him, what, what is that sweet spot? He said, well, imagine three circles. The first circle is culture, you know, our host culture. Ask yourself, what are we doing for the host culture? And obviously in Hawaii, it's the Hawaiian culture. Are we affecting um, the culture in a positive way? And even more importantly, or just as important, are we respecting the culture? In the second circle, you have community. What are you doing for the community around you? Are you impacting them in a positive way as well? Are you doing enough outreach? Is your business providing jobs? Because they're giving us their greatest resource, which is the human resource, right? What are we giving back to the community? And then finally, it's commerce, right? You, are you doing business? You know, our fiscal and financial responsibilities to our owners and operators and major stakeholders. So those three circles where the circle overlap is that sweet spot. So if you can ask yourself those hard questions of are you respecting culture? Are you affecting the community? And, you know, are you doing it right by your, your business? Then if you can check all those boxes, you'll be fine. Perfect. The two of you, so inspirational. Thank you so much. And I know that people who are watching this podcast are going to be inspired also. So before we close the show, any final words before we close the show? Tambra. I just want to say thank you to everyone um, across the state, across the world that has supported Maui um, over the past 14 months. We just so appreciate it. Um, and, you know, it's it's going to be a long road to continue to rebuild and, and recover. And um, I just invite you to visit Maui. We're open. The businesses need your support. We still have beautiful beaches, beautiful resorts, and incredible restaurants for you to come and enjoy. And most of those restaurants will be having Maui Gold Pineapple on their menu. So you can have the sweetest pineapple in the world um, when you visit Maui. So please come. Thank you so much. And if you haven't been to a Hall of Fame event, go next year because it is super fun and you'll have a great time. Thank you, Tamara. Peter, any final words before we close and end the show? Yeah, uh, mahalo to... All those have, who have voted for me, who actually got me on the Hall of Fame, uh, it's it's a huge honor. It's a uh, you know high praise, especially looking at the list. So thank you all so much. Um, and obviously, to Thomas point, yeah, visit Maui, visit Hawaii. I honeymooned on Maui. We love Maui. My <laughs> daughter has never seen Lahaina until we went for her birthday in March, and the fires obviously were August of that year. So you know, bring Maui back, bring Hawaii back. Um, and yeah, uh, visit Hawaii. Come visit us. Thank you so much. And again, the Hall of Fame is such a special night. It is the event of the year. We want to thank Hawaii Hata, Russell and Val Hata for being our presenting sponsors. We want to thank the 14 chefs who provided all of the food. We want to thank all of the beverage uh, partners who provided all the beverages and made it such a special night. Again, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the the president and CEO of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. I want to thank my guests for being here today and making this show so special. I want to apologize again for crying. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Um, the Hawaii Restaurant Association is the organization unifying, representing, and supporting the Hawaii restaurant and food service industry. And in closing, please remember to nourish connections, savor life, eat well, and live well. We'll see you on the next show. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs>